Question 4 from the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination. Astronomers studying a distant star analyse the light from the star that reaches the Earth. The line spectrum from the star is shown, along with the line spectra of the elements hydrogen, helium, mercury, calcium and sodium. And you can see them there in the diagram. There's the line spectra for the star at the bottom, and down below you can see the wavelengths in nanometers, which is uh, times 10 to minus 9 meters. Now, for one mark, you have to do a bit of work to determine which of the elements are present in the star. Well, what we do is we can use the edge of the ruler and line them up with each element's spectrum and see if it coincides with a line in the star spectrum. I'm going to use this little device here with a little yellow triangle on it. I'm going to place the yellow triangle on top of the first element, hydrogen, and as you can see the bottom of the line, with the small arrow, definitely that line matches up there. Go to the second line of hydrogen, and it definitely matches that line there as well, in the star, around about just over 450 nanometers. If I line it up to the third line, you can see, bingo, once again, it lines up with a line. And let's go for the last one in the hydrogen, the last line there, I'm put it on top of there, and you can see it matches the 650 nanometer, just below 650 nanometer line for the star. So I can say without a shadow of a doubt that uh, definitely hydrogen is present in the star. Hydrogen is present. So we'll mark that down. Hydrogen is present. And I'll do the same thing for helium. I go down and put my yellow triangle on the side of your ruler on the helium spectrum. Go to the first line of the helium spectrum that is there. And bingo, it's matching up with a line you can see there. Go to the second line of helium to the left, and it does match up again. The third one matches up. The fourth one definitely matches up. And the fifth one over here matches up. And the sixth one matches up as well. So you can see quite clearly that helium is also part of that star. So helium is also present. And that's really basically what we do. We now can go on to look at Mercury. Put your ruler at the beginning of Mercury, the line, and let's go to the first line in Mercury that is there. And you can see, oh yeah, it matches up with a line in the star. And the second one for Mercury matches up as well. These three one lines in here very close together, yeah, that matches up. That one matches up. And that one matches up. And the last two, that one matches up. And this one matches up as well. So Mercury is another element present on that star, Mercury. So we've got three already. Maybe we've got the, the whole lot. Let's try the fourth one, which is calcium. And we put our line on to calcium. And we go to the first line of calcium. And look. No line is there. So right away we can say calcium is not present in the star. If that line matched up to the star, there would be calcium there. So calcium is not there. What about sodium? Let's go down to sodium. And sodium has just got two lines away in the distance there. The double lines of sodium, the famous double lines of sodium. Let's look at the first line. And very hard to tell, but nope. If you go there, oh yeah, if you go there, it might match up. I don't think it matches up. Let's try the other one. Definitely not. No line there for sodium. So using a ruler uh, method with the edge of a ruler, in this case I've used this little line here, we can see that we match up all the lines. There is only hydrogen, helium and mercury present uh, in the star. Question 4 continued, part B. The star is 97 light years from Earth. And for one mark, we're asked to state what is meant by the term light year. Well, light year is a measure of distance. One light year is the distance travelled by a beam of light in a time of one year. So you imagine setting off a pulse of light and then you have it travelling through space and using the formula distance equals speed times time and knowing that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, then we can calculate the distance that light travels in one year. And that's really what a light year is all about. Space is such a 
vast quantity of unimaginable distances that our ordinary units of kilometres and on centimetres and metres just does not work. So we have to use a much more appropriate unit and that's the light year. So for one mark to state it, it would be one light year is the distance travelled by a beam of light in a time of one year. Now part two is for three marks, so there's a bit of a calculation involved and it says calculate the distance in metres from the star to the Earth. And we do that by using distance equals VT, distance equals speed times time. And we know the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power 8 metres per second. So we've just got one thing to calculate and that's really the time of one year in seconds. And this is how we go about doing this one then. So, all we have to do then is to go the distance, we'll work it out for just one light year, distance is equal to speed times time, which equals 3 times 10 to the power 8, and we'll write units like that, metres per second, so we can see how all the cancellations work out. So, we've got to change one light year, so it's going to be multiplied by one year, so we put down one year. I'm going to change the year right away down into seconds. We multiply that, first of all, by how many days in a year. And there are 365. But don't forget the 0.25, because that's the true definition of a year. So 365.25 days per year. And you can see these kind of units cancelling right now. Now we have to go from days into hours. And we know that there's going to be 24 hours in a day. H divided by D for the units. And now we have to go for hours into minutes. So we have to multiply by 60 to give us minutes per hour. The 60 minutes in one hour. And finally, to go into seconds, we have to multiply by 60 again. Only at 60 seconds per uh, minute. And you can see from this that uh, that's the right sum, 3 times 10 to the power 8 times 1 times 365.25 times 24 times 60 times 60. Because if you look at the units, the units should cancel. We have, uh, over here we have metres cancelling with metres, hours cancelling with hours, and days cancelling with days, and that year cancelling with that year there. And of course, we're left with meters per second and a second, and that second is going to cancel with that second. So we're left with the correct unit of meter. So all we have to do is just work that out on our calculator, and the answer for the distance, which, are, which is one light year, comes out to be 9.47 times 10 to the power 15 meters. And that's an enormous distance. And that's a distance of one light year. But of course the question asks us what about 97 light years? So the star's distance, come up here, the star's distance is going to be 97 times that because we know that one light year is going to be equal to 9.47 times 10 to the power 15 meters. So therefore 97 light years Ly is going to equal to 97 times 9.47 times 10 to the power 15 metres. And therefore that's going to give us an answer of 9.2 times 10 to the power 17 metres. So that's the distance that star is away. That's the equivalent of 97 light years. Question 4, Part C. Astronomers use satellite-based telescopes to collect information about objects in space. And for one mark, we're asked to suggest an advantage of using satellite-based telescopes such as the Hubble Space Telescope. Well, the big advantage of using the Hubble Space Telescope is the fact that it's above the atmospheric haze. It's above the atmosphere. And you can see in the next two images how important that is. Here's a picture taken on the ground of an object in space. This is taken from a telescope based on the ground. Uh, looking up through the atmosphere, a bit like looking up through the bottom of a swimming pool at the lights at the top of the swimming pool hall. And it all look wavy and out of focus because the water is constantly moving. 
Now, if we take, go out the water and look at the light, it's much clearer and much sharper. And that's the same thing by looking at these objects in space. The Hubble Space Telescope is above the atmospheric haze, and wow, look at the difference. Look at the clarity, and look at the special word called resolution, where you can see things a lot more clearer. And that's the big advantage of using the Hubble Space uh, Telescope above uh, the Earth atmosphere in a satellite form. You're above the atmosphere and you can see things a lot clearer because you're out of the atmospheric haze, which wiggles about the image. Now, part two says state one other use for satellite. It's only one mark. You just state the use, get it ready. And the one I like to use is one of the most important ones we have right now, and that is GPS. All these satellites provide us with GPS, which means Global Positioning Satellite, which means these satellites can tell your uh, position on the surface of the Earth to within about one metre. That's amazing, especially if you're out on uh, doing some sort of hill walking or doing some trekking. You can pinpoint your exact position. In fact, even aircraft now rely on GPS, Global Position Satellites, to pinpoint accurately where they are, even on the runway and even when they're flying between different countries. So that's a great use for satellite and state that to get your one mark. GPS, Global Positioning Satellite. Mm -hmm. 